Konnichiwa! I'm Alex with Lexco Moto Gymkhana. Thanks for coming back for another video. I have a very important topic for you guys today. This one is going to be related to the previous one. It's going to be throttle related. And it's going to be about how we can use our throttle to help us flip flop our motorcycle from side to side much easier. Okay, this is kind of like the missing piece to the flip flop maneuver that I've taught you guys in the past. The first time I noticed this was from watching my very favorite Moto Gymkhana riders from Japan, Takayoshi Sakta and Takashi Tominaga. I noticed that from listening to their exhaust and watching them ride, I started to notice that there was a very particular way that they were using the throttle. And it was kind of defining the way that they kind of flowed and the rhythm, the tempo that they were setting and the pace. Before we can get into how exactly we should use our throttle or how we can use our throttle for this, we first need to have a little quick conversation on the physical forces that are present when we start to roll on the throttle. So when we start to roll on the throttle, we have an increase of centripetal force, centrifugal force as well. And these forces are the ones that make us feel nice and stable the faster we go on a motorcycle. And the faster we go, the more our motorcycle wants to stay upright. Why? Because when we start to speed up, there's an increase in centripetal and centrifugal force. Also, on the inside of the motorcycle, we have all these spinning parts like the, like the crankshaft spinning. And the more we get on the throttle, the faster it spins. Also, the faster we go, the faster our wheels are spinning, the chain and sprockets, and all of these spinning components also contribute to gyroscopic forces. And these gyroscopic forces, just like the centrifugal force, want to keep our motorcycle upright. Okay? So, we can use this knowledge to our advantage. When we want to stand our bike up, we roll on the throttle. It's going to help us stand ourselves up a little bit more quickly than if we were just using steering inputs or self-steering inputs. And once we roll off the throttle, that centripetal force, centrifugal force, and the gyroscopic forces start to diminish, which makes it easier to lean the bike and steer the motorcycle. So remember the flip-flop maneuver from, uh, you know, level one Gymkhana, right? Gymkhana techniques. We're going flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop, going from one side to the other. As I start to flip, I'm rolling on the throttle because those physical forces are helping me to stand the bike up little by little. And then as I flop onto the new side, I'm rolling off the throttle because it's going to be easier to go onto that new side when the centrifugal force and gyroscopic, gyroscopic forces are diminishing. So I want you guys to do some homework. In the description below, I included example one and example two. Example one is Takayoshi Sakta and example two is Takashi Tominaga. I picked these two examples specifically because I want you guys to he hear their exhaust and in, in these videos, you can really hear their exhaust very well. And I want you to hear and see how it lines up with their flipping and flopping and how it's kind of defining how they're timing everything. It's very important that you pay attention to that when you watch these riders. Also, make sure that regardless if you're rolling on or rolling off the throttle, you always have to do it very smoothly. You never want jerky or abrupt throttle inputs, everything's always got to be very smooth. It can be quick, but it's still got to be very smooth, okay? Now, kind of going along with that, these physical forces, centrifugal force and gyroscopic forces, they're also going to help us to feel nice and stable as we're rounding a corner, going around a cone nice and tight. Those forces are going to help us to feel stable. This is why it's so important that as we're approaching a cone, we need to be rolling on and rolling on the throttle and making sure that we have enough momentum as we're rounding a cone. 
If you come try to come around a cone and you have not enough momentum, not enough centrifugal force, not enough uh, gyroscopic forces, you're going to feel very unstable and gravity is going to win and pull you right down to the ground. Gymkhana is all about being able to balance all of these physical forces. You have the centrifugal force and the gyroscopic forces wanting to keep you upright and you have gravity wanting to pull you down to the ground. So you have to make sure that you're rolling on enough to when you get to the cone and you've already rolled off, you have enough momentum to make it around that cone. And making sure that you're rolling on the throttle enough as you're approaching a cone not only is going to help you to feel more stable, but it's also going to keep your RPMs high or higher so that your RPMs don't drop too low. You start to lug the engine and you have no drive to get to the next cone. So th this also has a lot to do with RPM management. So um, this whole idea of slingshotting yourself with the throttle, getting some momentum and then rolling off and using engine braking with enough momentum this is very, uh, you know, exemplified very well by a writer. It's probably my third favorite Jim Connor writer. I think his name is Takashi Matsumoto, but in his videos, he goes by MTMT. All right. And in the description below, I included an example of MTMT writing, and you can really see him really, you know, pushing himself to the next cone. And then he starts to kind of fall around the cone. And right before gravity pulls him down to the ground completely and, and causes him to crash, he's already starting to roll on that throttle, kind of catching himself before he falls. It's, it's a very, you know, it's kind of what makes Moto Jim kind of fun to me. This constant, you know, pushing myself to the next cone, starting to fall around the cone and then catching myself with the throttle to, you know, get me to the next cone. This is kind of what makes Moto Jim kind of fun for me. I do have a quick demonstration video of myself writing, and I'm going to recommend that you practice this um, often. What I'm doing in this demonstration is I am practicing figure eights with no breaks whatsoever. I'm just using throttle, and I want you to pay very close attention to how I'm flip-flopping. Listen to my exhaust and see how it all fits in. I'm using the throttle to start the flip. I'm picking myself up and then as I flop, I'm rolling off the throttle very quickly and smoothly. Okay. And I want you to notice how I have enough momentum to make it around that cone in that U-turn. And as I'm exiting that U-turn, I'm already beginning to smoothly roll on the throttle to make sure that gravity doesn't win and pull me down to the ground. So check out this demonstration. Hit it. And we're back. So riders, I hope that this information makes sense to you. Using the throttle to take advantage of centrifugal force, gyroscopic forces is key to learning how to keep yourself from falling going around a U-turn. And it's going to dictate your rhythm and your tempo when you're riding Moto Gymkhana. Pay attention to these things when you're watching Moto Gymkhana riders. And you're going to see how every rider has their own way of doing this, but you have to develop your own style. And that only comes from practice and time and developing these things over months and years. Riders, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys at the next one. Arigato and peace.